they're going to be presenting next week if they submit the stuff on time. Okay. Who is this, Alejandro? It was a African Student Union. Oh, okay. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Kenny. Okay, we begin recording. Thank you everyone for being here. Today is Friday, April uh, 5th of 2024. Um, let's start with attendance. I will go down the line. Uh, let me see. Alejandro, you want to go first? I'm guessing he said we're having a hard time hearing you, Alejandro. Um, but you're here. Mike. Here. Thank you. Gabe. I'll come back to Gabe. Ree. I'm here. Thank you. And then Penny Palacios, I am here. Gabe, can you hear us? Okay. Oh, he hears you good. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, perfect. Cool. Okay. Thanks, Gabe. Um, anybody would like to read the mission statement? I can read it. Can you hear me? Yeah, now we can hear you. Okay. Um, to support the evolving needs of the MSU Denver students by advocating in their best interest to enhance the university experience and opportunities. Thank you. Perfect. Can you can we go down so we can uh, see what the agenda looks like so we can approve it? Thank you. OK, that's all we have. We have Connie and Angelica. Sounds good. Um, perfect. Anybody has any changes Would like to motion to make any changes to the agenda? Cool, I motion we approve the agenda. I second. Thank you. Uh, everybody who agreed in approving the agenda, say aye, please. Aye. 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 And Matt is here. Matt's here. Alejandro, you're raising your hand because you have something to say or you're just saying aye? Sorry, I'm at I. Okay, thank you. Sweet. Let's start with uh, updates. Mike, do you have anything from the Board of Trustees? Um, I have no further updates from them now. Okay, thank you. Say, Cap. I think Gabe's the only one here. Uh, Gabe, since your mic is uh, uh, working, I'm just going to have you put it in the chat. I'm here. Oh, hi, Will. Do you want to give an update? Sure. Um, save uh, Gabe the hassle of typing. So a few things were discussed during the Save Cab meeting. Uh, first one is the Aurora Police Department's throwing a petting zoo May 1st and 2nd, 10 to 2 p.m. on the north side of the art building. They, uh, the chief, um, I'm blanking out on his last name, but uh, the chief wanted us to just spread the word on that. And then the second thing, the big thing I would say is the safety drills a lot. There was a lot of discussion on uh, this of uh, safety during SACAB, like what that looks like and how we can get all three uh, campuses to improve their safety protocols and uh, do better training around safety which would look uh, like uh, drills and stuff like that. So there was a discussion on that and how to improve that. Um, and then the master plan people committee, excuse me, met earlier and there was discussion on the master plan. Um, I unfortunately could not make that meeting. Um, so I'm not sure if Gabe was, I'm pretty sure Gabe was there for that portion, but I'm not 100% sure. Maybe Gabe can type something regards to that. Um, and so far, that was most of uh, what happened at SACAB today. Thank you. Um, let me see. Yeah, Gabe, if you have anything else to add, just put it on the chat and I'll read it out loud. Thank you. Uh, Accountability Committee, Re. 
um, been um, reaching out to some of our counselors about things and committee changes and um, hoping that we can talk today about meetings going forward and um, some of our members staying online just to adhere to rules and regulations for things that they're going through and the rest of us meeting in person for the rest of this term, but we can talk about that in new business. Um, I am, as far as accountability, I mean, I think that's about it. I do have some up open floor announcements of things I've been doing though. Gabe, do you wanna add anything or is, I guess you can't really, cause you can't use your mic. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Ree. Mm -hmm. Um, where are we? And budget committee, Alejandro. Um, no real updates. Um, we're gonna have a next meeting on Wednesday to discuss an organization requesting funding. Um, we also just made the second purchase for Rowdy's donation, and. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. OK, awesome. Thanks. Yes, Will. I have a quick question for Alejandro um, in regards to uh, I'm sure he'll take care of this, but I was just curious as to a potential maybe range of rollover money for the next uh, committee coming up or not the committee next uh, iteration of TSAC. Yeah. Um, are you asking if we have uh, a rollover amount? Yes. Or are you asking how much do we have or how much are we projecting to leave over? For uh, pro more of a projection because I know there's still some spending to be done. Um, I mean, from the looks of it, we haven't really been, a lot of the committees haven't really been using the money. Okay. Uh, but it looks like we we're probably going to get, I'd say maybe 10,000, 11,000 for rollover. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, sustainability committee. Oh, no, sorry, PR committee, Matt. Yeah. Um, I tried to set up a meeting earlier this week that unfortunately didn't happen. I'm trying to set one up tonight or after this meeting. Um, but I have a couple ideas that if I need to just make the decision on my own for spring fling, I can, but I would appreciate if we can get together because I would like to work on some branding materials with our new logo. Um, and I'm thinking of either trying to get the Mexican ice cream cart or trying to get like uh, candies from around the world to hand out. Um, I think that's about it right now. Okay, that sounds good. Yes, Will. Uh, I was just a uh, question for Matt. Uh, Spring Flame, that's what, uh, one or two weeks from now? Two weeks, I'm guessing? Yeah, maybe. I think it's two uh, weeks. Um, I'll, I'll meet with you in person just to like help you out with that then. All right. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thanks, Matt. Um, OK, now we go to the Sustainability Committee. Gabe, um, I will have you type things in the chat if you have any. Alejandro. Um, yeah, for the Sustainability Committee, um, I just wanted to put it out there. I do remember that I told John that I would help him out with that. Helping him with that, not too sure what he's really doing but I can reach out to him. Yeah, he's just going to be working on this now, Alejandro. Okay. All right, then. well then, sorry, Gabe, I haven't really been there, but I'll reach out to you after this and then we can talk about um, if you have time. Thank you. Um, okay, open for announcements. Perfect. I'm going to have you raise your hands just so it does it like one, two, three thing. Uh, but it seems like three is next. 
And then anybody else? Nope, it seems like it's just Re, and then I will go after. Hi, Re. Hi. Okay. <laughs> so I have a few things to talk about. I um, met with, and I'm working with Human Resources, and you will have gotten my messages about the calendar to vote on that calendar as, you know, TSAC. And I appreciate those of you who were able to go in and do that. It was, this was about the resolution from last year that Naomi posed with an Indigenous Peoples Day um, as part of our university calendar. And so that is going to be part of it, whether it's in at the end of December or it's more significantly on the day um, that it's you know, really happening in the in the calendar year, that was the vote. So when I have information to share about that, I will, but thank you for those of you who voted. Um, I have been working all year on the Graduate Council and in my role as TSAC, they asked me to do this. So I wasn't nominated to this, but I've been doing this every month. And I, um, as part of that, you know, I'm working to, we have been um, uh, approving things for graduate students for, prerequisites and things. These are department heads from all over campus. That's what that work has been every month. But as part of this, I was asked to join the Office of Budget <laughs> about funding increases for some of the departments. And so I was a grad student representative on that and TSAC, you know, because we reach everywhere, don't we? And um, I am asking right now for them to, and I have put this forward in the last two months, to talk about graduate student fees that are excessive, especially when courses are in the evenings and we don't access daytime um, facilities like undergraduate students do. So I'm hoping we can get some of those fees looked at reassessed for graduate students because I know I would appreciate it even though I'm finishing in December and upcoming graduate students would appreciate that. There's also work we're doing about um, what you're taking an undergraduate school, counting for graduate school and not having to duplicate time and money to repeat when those classes are almost identical. Lastly, thank you for bearing with me. Um, I'm going to take the information that people contributed to about notes from having our safety training to give to the Dean of Students office so that we can really, like we talked about, um, put forward our ideas and be part of what will I hope be um, a welcome week, you know, a safety event initiative during welcome week in August. And whatever that is going to look like, I, I'm not sure yet, but taking all of our ideas that we put together and giving that to the office. And then even though I won't be on TSAC, I'm healthy, happy to help drive that and work with TSAC on that, you know, over summer. That is all. Thank you, Ree. Um, that's a lot. And I hope that that with the graduate student fees, yeah, I guess as undergraduate students, we don't even think about that, but you're right. Good, good luck and let us know how we can help you advocate for that. Um, okay, and then my open floor announcement is um, we were successful to help the uh, Denver Metro House Fair Housing. The conference is happening on the 25th of April and because uh, we we were able to help. They're offering us a table in this space. Uh, it is from 8.30 to 12.30. And then there is uh, in the goodie bags, like they, they also hand out goodie bags and we get to have a piece of uh, literature. I think we should do the piece of literature just so we get out there what like TSAC is and how it works. Mostly because it is that we are in, we are on campus, we are very present on campus. Um, and regarding the tabling, I have a DC event that day, all day. Um, is anybody able to table for us that day? And if that is the case, um, I will let him know who is attending, who is tabling. And if not, I will respectfully decline um, our tabling space. So please, if anybody wants to. No. When did you say it was again? It's the 25th from 8.30 to 12.30. Yes, Will. Uh, before you decline, can we 
get to the end of this meeting and then get back to you with the yes or no. I just need to check some some things before I'm like committing myself. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I wouldn't decline in the middle of the meeting. Um, but let's okay. until I'll give you until guys until Tuesday and. Um, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, and then I'll send a reminder on Tuesday morning. But if by like Tuesday at the end of the day, like 3 p.m., I just I don't hear from anybody, then I will. I will decline. Uh, yep. April twenty thirty. Sorry. You can use it somewhere April twenty fifth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Eight to what? Sorry. Eight thirty to twelve thirty. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Um, guys. Quick question. And yep. if I were to do it, um, I do have class at nine thirty, and then I get out at eleven. Would I? Would that be okay? Or are you, would you be expecting us to be there the whole time? Um, let me talk to him, but I, it seems like Will might be able to help you. So if you guys can tag in and tag out, like, I think that would be ideal. Um, I might be able to help from like nine to like 10 30. Um, I think like we can do like a tag, tag in, tag out sort of thing. Um, but it is just that last hour that I'm not very sure of. Uh, but if you can take over the last hour, then I'll, I'll say yes. Somebody else is talking to Matt. Um, I have school that day at 11, but I can try and help out with like setup or some of the earlier times. Okay. Okay, I will do. Okay, I will send like a spread out like a, an Excel sheet and then we'll figure it out our times. Um, and then if, again, if we don't have something figured out by Tuesday, I will decline. But just so you guys know, we have a couple of days to figure or plan out. Awesome. Thank you guys. Anything else? Sorry, my cat is being annoying. Um, cool. Anything else on open floor announcements? Okay. Uh, faculty and staff senate. My update will come with one of our guests today. Um, that, that's what that is. And the council of chairs and directors. I have class, so I have conflicting times with the committee. Um, I wasn't able to go. And now we're up to advisor updates. I'm gonna start if Dr. Barone wants to start or Armando. I will start just because Dr. Barone's not feeling well, so just give her some grace today. Um, but I do have a good amount of things. I'm sorry, my camera's not on, my computer's frozen, so on my phone. First thing I want to mention is the TSEC dinner. Um, TSEC dinner has been sent to all of your um, just everyone's calendar and it is scheduled for April 19th, which is a Friday from 5.30 to 7.30. Um, just be sure that you have that on your calendars to attend. This is a dinner with senior leadership. Um, it's gonna be President Davidson, Will Simpkins, Taylor, Ed Brown, some folks, this is kind of almost like a, an annual a thing that we do with our TSEC leaders and senior leadership just to kind of close out the year, give, you know, rounding updates over dinner and community. Next is inauguration. Inauguration is May 3rd. It will take place of our TSEC meeting. Um, so just be mindful to be present. Even if you're not rerunning, um, it is great to have the outgoing council there just for recognition, and just for support. I will be leaning on a couple of y'all to assist me that day. So just be mindful of that and make sure to check your inboxes or your team's chats so when I reach out to you all, but I'll have more information before I formally do that. Voting for student government elections. Elections opens up on Monday. So be sure to cross promote, promote, send it to your classes, send it to your friends, send it to your mom, your aunt, your aunt. I don't care who it is. Make sure they vote um, because we are trying to you know, beat last year's numbers. Uh, last year we had around 311 voters, I believe. My goal is 500 this year. I know we can do it. Slowly but surely, we're, we're getting there. Uh, CU Denver opened their elections up this week and they told me last, yesterday they were only at 75. So I wanna make sure we have more than that. Um, the ways to vote is via Roadrunner link. That link has been posted everywhere on the QR codes. You all will get a message as well that you can you know, craft and manipulate to send to your peers with the Rotor link, the QR code. And there's also gonna be an in-person polling option. 
Um, Monday through Wednesday, we will be in the TV Multicultural Lounge uh, from around 10 to 2, maybe a little bit later. Um, if you want to come and, you know, have people shuffling through the Tivoli to vote in person, they will vote on paper ballot and we'll count it up at the end of the week. And then, yeah, so two ways to vote. Please, please, please make sure you send uh, people to vote and get things done. Let me see. It's one, two, three. Uh, food for finals, Matt. Let's um, connect. If you can connect today, um, that way we can start getting logistics down for food for finals or whoever is going to be in charge of the PR events team. Please just send me a ping to say like, oh, we need to get this done. Did we want, I will let, let's talk please for food for finals because it is coming around the corner. So I need to organize that with you all. Next is do, 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 do. Dr. Barone sent out an email. I want to say late last week and early this week with a reminder. Um, we want you all, you know, as an entity, our departments, I do it for both programs, but we want you all to curate your own annual report of sorts because, you know, there's been a lot of just narrative around the, not the negative, but the lack of effort that we've done this year. And I think, you know, that needs to change. And we've done a lot this year, despite all of our, you know, adversities that we face, we've actually done a lot. We've put a lot in place and we put a lot in motion. Um, so we want you to take ownership of that and create an annual report. Dr. Barone did share a template. So work together. Um, and we want to see, you know, a draft of the annual report by next Friday. We can work with y'all and then finalize that um, by the Friday after. And then I think that's a perfect timing to, you know, share that with the senior leaders at our dinner. So please, 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 um, I will empower the chairs to either delegate the annual report out or do what y'all see best. But please get that, at least that first draft to us by next Friday. Um, that's done. And... Fair housing, Denny, you did answer me, or you answered my question. So that's on the 25th of April, you said. Do we have a time for that again? 8.30 to 12.30. 8.30 to 12.30, and that's in the turn hall, correct? Yes. Perfect. Thank you so much for that information. And then lastly, just a reminder, um, TSEC is TSEC, business and personal, you know, we're, we're, we got to separate business and personal. We are here to support everyone as much as we can. But we, I just want to remind Dr. Bro and I want to just have a, another reminder on the books that TSEC is not for personal matters um, to discuss things that are personal to you all. So let's refrain from that when we are in TSEC, TSEC specific chats, business meetings, email threads, X, Y, and Z. If you have a personal matter, of course, you are more than welcome to come up to either of us to chat. Um, but yeah, business is business, personal is personal, and then we can adjust and care accordingly. Does anyone have any questions for me or Dr. Brown, if you wanted to hop in? I do. Um, I will be flying out on the 19 for the Model UN competition. Okay. Yeah, so. Thank you for letting me know. If we, if that can be changed, if not, I understand. Otherwise, I will be yeah. If not, yeah, I yeah, I'm so sorry. I, we really tried fighting it, but they only gave us two dates, and the second date was the day of the Men of Color Symposium, so we, a lot of us couldn't do that day either, because um, leadership was, like, they gave us a, an hour time frame for that day, so the 19th was the only day that everyone, senior leader-wise, was available, so I apologize for that. Oh, that's okay. Thank you. Yep. Any other Hello. questions? I think Will has his hands. His What's up, Will? Um, I know this isn't extremely important. I'm just more curious about this, but I saw that you were bringing up uh, that one organization I tried to push for last year and fall semester. I forget what they're called to improve. Uh, how we run things. Um, I forget their name. Um, do you know who I'm referring to, Armando? An organization to improve things. Like the trip thing. The Oh Napa? Uh, yeah, we said we were not gonna do that this year. Not not NACA or NAP or no. I'll just I'll talk to you offline about it. 
Okay. Yeah, I yep. am. I am looking at other, um, like association student government conferences. I'm evaluating. Um, if you find any other ones, we can definitely chat about it. But uh, if that's what you're talking about, yes. Yeah. Yes. Just, just connect with me. After okay. this or whatever. Sounds good. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions? Or Dr. Brown, go ahead. Yeah. So I just want to. Um elaborate a little bit on what uh, Armando said about the the annual report slash updates. It's not only for you all to be able to document your work and not work, your service that you all have completed <laughs> over the year, but we also want to be able to highlight it and demonstrate the progress in those things, but also to be able to share that with the new incoming council, right? Because in addition to the transition um, happening with new people coming on. It's important that you all are able to demonstrate and communicate what you've done this semester so that if there are projects or things that need to be carried forward or that you're hoping someone might be interested in carried forward so that you don't lose that momentum. So I wanna be really um, like clear that it's not just about serving as a document to help um, I guess share with everyone, including the campus community on what you're doing, but that it's also for the new incoming council members so that they have a good place to start from as they are stepping into these roles. And I know there are some of you who are rerunning, yay, um, who can hopefully provide some of that continuity and that consistency. But it's that's why um, we thought it was really important. And in the past, um, there have been succession planning documents that were um, that were put together, but it's usually come like at the 11th hour so we wanted to try to be a little bit more proactive this year um so there's that and then around trainings and support um i've mentioned it before but just want to let you all know that armando and i and tony are working on a curriculum for the new council around um leadership development and things um that we believe that they need to know even prior to the fall semester and so we're um, offering it through a hybrid format this summer, and then um, we will be sharing that information when counselors are signing up um, to accept their positions after elections happens, that there are going to be some required trainings and activities, um, and that is going to be one of them is the um, leadership course this summer. And it's not a full-fledged course, but it's, it's going to be something. Um, more or less online. And then we're also going to be, we have tentative dates for the leadership retreat, which will be August 7th and 8th of um, the summer. So, and that will be in preparation for next fall. So just save the dates. Even if you're not in TSAC, you are more than welcome and invited to join because you are still student leaders in a lot of different ways on campus. Um, so just wanted to offer those things. Um, and then yeah, I guess just last but not least, I just know that there's going to be a lot happening over the next couple months. So um, please, please, please reach out to us if there are things you can't attend or something comes up or whatever. Just communicate with us um, because we know that this is a really stressful time. Um, but just communicating with us as you need support or just communication in general, whether it's on the chat or with us, if you need our support. I just wanted to remind you all that we are here for that. and. Yeah, thank you for giving me some grace for being out last week too. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming back. <laughs> um, awesome. Well, thank you guys. Um, I will look into the report. I think it is really, really important. Um, and yeah, guys, we should definitely like. I think we have a lot of ideas of like things that. Uh, could have been improved so we could all just maybe just add like on a some ideas to that how like training or curriculum could look like for the next counselor and that would definitely help not only you know with like a deficiency but I also think like interpersonal relationships could be benefited and impacted by it so if we have a minute um, I will probably help to send out some reminders this week um sweet uh election updates sam how's the election world going yep so armando uh announced that we have got our elections starting next week um i'll send you all an email in a couple minutes with the link to the uh, roadrunner link form 
uh, the flyer for voting and the QR code. So you can distribute that as you see fit. Um, we are still at 10 candidate applications and we are technically allowed to accept them until ballots open as per the elections code. Um, so Sorry, that's so I'm just giving you. Uh, it is, thank you, Alejandro. It is 102. Uh, public comments started at one. We have uh, 30 minutes left. If anybody is here for public comment, please, please make yourselves known. So sorry, Sam. I will get back to you. This is on me. Nope, we're good. Okay, if anybody has anything, any public comment, I will, will I'm going to have to interrupt you then. I'm so sorry. Um, go ahead, Sam. It's all good. Um, yeah, so uh, we are technically able to accept applications still. So if anybody asks about that, um, that that you know, that is something to be aware of. Um, but otherwise, we do have our candidate social next Wednesday in the Tivoli Garage from uh, two to five p.m. Um, this Wednesday, April tenth. So uh, you're welcome to come and stop by, hang out with the candidates. It's not like a, a show up for the whole time kind of thing. It's a pop in and out. So anyone who wants to stop by, uh, grab some. Some appetizers from Los Molinos uh, are welcome too. And uh, if you could let people know about that going on, that would be great too. Um, so yeah, uh, like Armando said, elections will be online and I'll send out an email with all that info in a few minutes here. Awesome. Thank you. Sweet. Okay. Well, we will keep moving forward. And do we have any public comments? Like I said, we will hold on. I see something in the well do you have your hand up i have a question for sam but i don't know um definitely sh shut me down if this is inappropriate i'm not 100 percent sure but what does that mean for the elections if there's 10 people versus not having the well 13 people to make it competitive um there's not really a lot we can do as far as I'm aware. Um, Armando, uh, correct me if, if I say anything wrong, but I think we're just going to run the election as and as long as somebody gets a vote, then they, they will be qualified for the council. Um, as far as how that will affect the council's size next year, um, I like it's I guess we'll just have like vacant seats. Um, we, we will need to work on a plan to fix that if needed. All righty, thank you. Thank you, Sam. Uh, perfect. Can you, can you please go down on the screen? You re has your hand up. Oh, I just I'm have a quick question about to follow on from what um, Will had said. Uh, do you, Sam, I'm sure that you have, um, if not, please work on protocol for checking walk-ins if we don't have the exact number registered for election or beyond that to check with their status with you know code of conduct and those kind of things that needs to be you know part of this too i think and um being able to somehow i don't know how <laughs> check that prior to accepting them as candidates or as elected officials. What's your question? <laughs> People who walk up and want to run and there we and as as write in votes or oh yeah so some... basically a, a write in or someone who's putting in their petition last second. Mm -hmm. Um I have access to pretty much verify everything. Okay except for the the conduct check but the conduct check you know uh taylor simpkins taylor simpkins taylor tackett knows elections is going on so it, it's pretty instantaneous um okay. to make sure they're eligible to run sure okay. yeah great just something you don't want to have to do later after the elections you know so thank yeah. you yeah thank you Thanks, guys. Any other questions on elections before we move forward? Okay. Um, our first guest is going to be here at 115. 
Uh, I say we, well, I will stay here in case there is public comment, but I'm in a motion for a break. Um, yeah, from here to perhaps 1.13. And, but I'll... I'll, I'll Alejandro? I was just going to say that if Ani is here, you should just let them present just to get it out of the is, way or not get Connie it out of the here? way. But I, I didn't see Connie. I believe someone else was coming for Connie. I still don't see that they're here either, though. OK, never mind. I, I, yeah, I can ping them to start heading over. Give me two seconds, y'all. But yeah, go ahead and motion for your break. Uh, OK, I yes. second. Awesome. Uh, everybody, however you say aye, we'll be back at uh, 1113, just five minutes. Aye. 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 I'll stay here until 1115. Thanks, guys.
Hey, Matthew, they have uh, just a quick little recess. We were in between presentations, so they will be hopping back on in about a minute or two. Oh, thanks for letting me know. Of course. Yeah, I'll be hanging. Hey guys, welcome back. I am having issues. Alejandra, I'm gonna have you take over because my my call my call keeps dropping and saying call failed. Um, so I'm gonna have you take over from here because it's the third time that it kicks me out. I think Alejandro stepped out for a quick second. So okay, I will wait for him. To I can no, no 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 I can. Do we are we back on time? I must say I can just help help y'all with this real fast. Yeah, but Alejandro's back. Um, okay, he'll he'll be back. I hopefully it doesn't drop. But we have our first guest, um, Matthew. How how can we call you? Why should we refer to you? Oh, please call me Matt. Oh, thank you for uh, coming in, Matt. Um, are you here? In, in case of Connie. Yes. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. Well. Thank you for joining us. I'm just going to, the floor is yours. Cool. Yes. Hi there. Um, I don't think I've ever met with uh, the Associated Student Government Group. Um, it's it's nice to be with you. I, I've been at MSU Denver for about 17 years and have served in a couple of different capacities. I was the Faculty Senate President for um, several years before um, Dr. Katia Campbell. and. Uh, at that time, I was I was working with the um, president and the association, but it's been a while. So thanks for having me. I am representing a working group that is looking at withdrawal deadlines. Uh, it's part of the larger student success initiative. I'm I'm not sure if you've heard about that. I'm, I'm guessing you probably have. Um, it's being led by Will Simpkins and Meredith Jeffers. It's it's a um, in effort to operationalize the strategic plan and specifically look at um, retention, completion, um, student experience. So the team that I'm on is looking specifically at withdrawals and thinking about um, if there are elements of the withdrawal policy that could be improved for, for the benefit of students. And so that's the um, business I um, come before you with today. I do have a PowerPoint presentation. Um, I am not always competent at sharing my screen in Teams, but let me try to do this and um, um, hopefully it, it will not be um, a problem for us. So let me just see if I can get this. Um, let's see, I'll do my screen. And then I'll do this. Oops, you don't want to see my emails. <laughs> Lots of emails. Um, are you seeing the PowerPoint presentation now? Yeah, I yes, see. we are. Great, great. Thank you. And I, and before I jump into this, do, are there any questions for me? Not yet. Oh, not yet. OK. okay. <laughs> Well, you can see the um, members of the team are our are, are registrar, Connie Sanders, who I think you work with, Melissa Jimenez, who is leaving the institution, which is sad, Kevin Lowell, uh, myself, and um, Dr. Sinley, who's the chair of the nutrition department, and then Mark Kocheksky, who is a um, an advisor in the School of Education. So this is just kind of the background I'd already um, explained a little bit. We're a subgroup of the student success launch and we are looking um, specifically at this withdrawal um, information and part of the measure of our success is going to be um, whether or not we recommend a new withdrawal deadline. We don't have to. I mean, if if we get feedback from various groups and, and decide it's nothing that needs to be fixed, then we don't have to do anything. But um, we definitely want to engage in share governance as we collect feedback on this. And that's that's why I'm here today. Uh, so you probably already know this and I'll just quickly go through this. Withdrawals are, are just uh, a way for a student to um, get out of a class uh, beyond the drop deadline. Um, currently, the R withdrawal is set at 67% of, of the course completion. So almost, you know, um, half, a little bit out, uh, more than half 
Um, as you well know, students are still responsible for tuition and fees on withdrawals. Uh, that course remains on the transcript, but it's denoted with a W, which does not negatively impact the GPA, but it does count towards total credit hours attempted. Um, so again, the withdrawal deadline is is based on the length of the semester or the course. If it's if it's not a semester long course and it's set currently at 67 percent. If a student misses that withdrawal deadline, um, they have to provide um, documentation of extenuating circumstances, usually usually family, medical, personal emergencies to justify an administrative withdrawal. Um, we did a little bit of number crunching and, and it turns out that there are a lot of withdrawals and, and usually for good reason. Um, these these are the numbers from 2019 to uh, 23, so fall of 19, 23, and that of course includes COVID. So we have received feedback from other groups asking us to disaggregate this data and take out the COVID terms, uh, and we're in the process of doing that. But you can see that in the fall terms between fall 2019 and summer 23, 9,000 withdrawals were um, processed, uh, which is about 2,000, well not about, it is 2,334 per term. Um, numbers go down slightly in the spring, and, and that's probably just a, a reflection of lower um, enrollment during spring semesters, and then similarly uh, numbers go down in summer. Uh, the reason we're thinking about moving the deadline are um, specifically aimed at trying to improve student experience and student success. And one of the things we've been kind of wrestling with is if we move the withdrawal deadline further, would it potentially give some students a chance to get more comfortable with the class, get into a place where like, okay, maybe I can pass this class, talk with the faculty member. Sometimes the issue is that faculty has not been responsive in grading and that that students are waiting to get a midterm exam gra back graded so that they can gauge like, whoa, am I going to pass this class or do I need to get that withdrawal? Uh, and that's a separate conversation, but as as chair of the history department, I can tell you I, I try to have that conversation with faculty and it doesn't always yield good results, um, but we do ask our faculty to be responsive and timely in grading. Unfortunately, not everyone adheres to that um, and, and it is an ongoing conversation and one that is important. Grades need to be returned um, quickly and efficiently so that students have a better idea of where they stand in a semester, but that's that's kind of part of the calculus here as we think about this withdrawal deadline. Um, and then we, we also thought, well, even if a student ends up withdrawing from a course, the longer they can stay in that course if they're engaged, probably the better because they can gather information that they will use the next semester when they register for that course or if in a subsequent semester they decide to do that course again, they would have their notes and materials from further into the semester. And ultimately, if we can eliminate, um, not eliminate, reduce um, the the withdrawals will help students, um, you know, improve and maintain their their GPAs um, to some degree, depending on what grade they earn in the class they would have otherwise withdrawn from. So the question, what do other colleges do? And, uh, you know, it's it's interesting in Colorado, folks are typically um, a little bit more generous in the withdrawal deadline. Um, the average withdrawal deadline is um, week 12. We are week 10. So um, on average, other institutions of higher education in Colorado give students two extra weeks to contemplate that withdrawal. Some institutions like University of Northern Colorado allow the withdrawal all the way up until um, finals. Um, and then the Colorado Community College system allows withdrawals um, as far as we could figure out uniformly across um, the 13 campuses or um, excuse me, across the Colorado Community College campuses um, until week 13. And so that was on our mind as we started proposing possible solutions or changes with our withdrawal policies. So what we were looking at, if we took this spring, for example, now, of course, our deadline has passed. Um, but if if we had extended our deadline from 67 percent to 80 percent, um, the deadline would have been the 13th of April, the end of week 13. 85 percent would be end of week 14, and you can see the numbers there, so on and so forth. Um, 95 percent would be just before finals, which again, that's what University of Northern Colorado does. Uh, we've been 
getting feedback and that's why I'm here today. I have a survey. I'll, I'll post a survey link in the chat when the presentation is, is done here. Uh, and, and you can share that. Uh, and we ask you to share it as widely as, as you can with students so that we can really pull that. Um, your, your perspectives on this are obviously um, the most important as far as I'm concerned and I think I'm speaking on behalf of our committee. We want to know what's best for students, what students want. Um, and obviously we need to talk to faculty and, and chairs and administration, but really this is the key um, feedback that we are seeking yours. So the last last thing or just additional um, considerations. Um, is it possible that this could decrease the number of students who are on academic probation and suspension? We don't know. Um, we'd like to do more research into that, but um, honestly, we, we don't know at this point. Um, would it reduce the number of administrative withdrawal appeals? Is possible, but again, we, we don't know. And, and um, Melissa Jimenez, who is part of this working group, um, she for a while I think was the person processing the administrative withdrawals for Connie in the registrar's office and she said it is a a real chore because it's just manual she had to deal with it on a case-by-case -case basis there are questions about if the administrative withdrawal includes tuition refund which it does not so even if an administrative withdrawal is granted a student will not be granted a refund of the tuition unless they file an additional um, appeal for a tuition refund, um, which is again a whole separate issue. Um, this would not impact financial aid and um, would not impact veterans benefits. Um, on the positive side, it would standardize experience for transfer students from community colleges if we set it later in the semester. Um, and so the early feedback, you know, just kind of conversationally and some of the initial results from the survey we sent out, um, advisors think this is a great idea. They're in favor. Chairs are mostly in favor. Chairs are always, you know, hard to gauge, um, but, but mostly chairs are in favor. Um, I haven't seen the feedback from faculty yet. I know we're getting that, so I, I can't say. Um, but now we're interested in your feedback. I'm here to take notes. I've got my pen and my notebook, so um, I'm ready for questions, comments, and then I'll also provide that survey um, in, in the link for this meeting so that you all can distribute that um, widely if possible. So I'll end the show there, and then I'm happy to take questions and, and feedback. I have a question. Um, hi, I'm Re. I'm grandma in this group. I'm a ma master's student in behavioral health. And oh, nice. um, I have two sons who are undergraduate students, one who transferred here from Colorado State. And so <laughs> I have every experience. <laughs> but I wanted to know, how is it a hardship for the administration or the university based on whatever the dates are for withdrawal? Is it harder if we push these dates back, basically because of the reasons you gave with faculty not grading things fast enough so students can gauge where they are? And, you know, also there are many faculty here who are like old school. They don't even use Canvas, which is so frustrating for students right. because right. not only do they not have grades, they can't measure things. And, you know, so it's really yeah. hard. And yeah. I imagine in the history department, especially with essays and things, you have a, a lot of headaches in that area. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's no doubt. Um, no, I don't think it, it creates it. Well, first of all, um, that's yeah. awesome that you've got a son at MSU Denver. Both my sons go to MSU Denver. Um, right. One is an art major. The other is a history major. Um, nice. ne never did take one of my classes and he's graduating this spring. So I was oh. you know, curious if he'd ever land in one of my classes, but he never did. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I, my, my understanding, and I'm of course not um, directly involved with the registrar's work, but yeah. I don't think it, it it creates any hardship at all, other than the initial like let's move it, let's change the um, procedural yeah. calendar. If it's anything, like it may reduce. Dunk. Yeah, it's it to me. I'm with you. I, I'm like, why wouldn't we move this? And mm -hmm. in the hope that even eliminating ten you know withdrawals in a semester and, and helping a student complete the course rather than take because withdrawals. For me as a faculty member, I hate it because I don't want a student paying tuition and not getting the credit for the course. Right. So I and this is something I tell my students, let's consider other options before the withdrawal. And and maybe that's an incomplete, um, you know, there's there's a range of things we can talk about. But wow. I'm with you, Re. I think 
why wouldn't we move this? But I don't want to bias anyone's opinion no. either. I mean, I, mean I just wish more faculty were like you in that thinking, because I think there are a lot who don't even collaborate with the student on this and their rules are hard rules. And I, I do take, excuse me for monopolizing everything, guys, but I do, I'm paying attention to the fact about early registration for the upcoming term, because I guess if you're in a class, you can't register for that class again. So you don't mm -hmm. want clashes there but even if it's like a day apart and you can drop and then add know that you're going to get it next term and not feel so bad about it i think that's a winner mm -hmm. but happy to fill in the survey <laughs> okay I'll, I'll get that in the chat here yep okay but hello matt you're you're yes. muted. Um, so I was just kind of thinking of, and I'm just spitballing, but a way to kind of split the hair would have more of a traditional withdrawal date and then maybe one where if they want to withdraw, they have to talk to like their professor or something so then they can discuss the success plan. Um, that's yeah i like where you're going with that um matthew i that and that has come up with our group that that is um we weren't ready to present on that yet but one of the things we were parsing out is um out of those thousands of withdrawals how many were people who withdrew from every class mm -hmm. and and that may be one way to break that down matthew is to say um if there were a way to to code the system so that someone who's withdrawing from all classes could send a flag up to a primary advisor or a faculty advisor and say, hey, if we notice that you are withdrawing from all of your classes. Can we have a conversation to see if there's anything we could do to help or just make sure that um, you have everything you need um, to understand uh, what this will mean for for you and and um, but I, this is the first time I've heard that suggestion that there's more than one day and one day it would be linked with some kind of feedback or, or um, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, because I'm, I'm going to force the student to talk to the professor and they can work through the other options of like an incomplete or modifying assignments to try and retain them, um, which yes. I yes. understand is the main goal and then have like a no fault withdrawal or a one with no questions asked and then the other one with like you have to do the like one next step before you can fully just withdraw yeah i really like that suggestion i've i've written that down if if there's a, i can't remember the survey i haven't looked at it for a while if there's a um place where you can put in a narrative comment mm -hmm. um go go ahead and throw that in there but i'll definitely take uh, this back to the working group too uh I also have a question on the, I think it was the second slide you mentioned that before doing the w uh, withdrawal line has to be around a 70% of curse completion, completion, correct? What, um, what, uh, yeah. in time? I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I missed the, the end of your question there. Sorry, go ahead. No, like what does that, what does that entitle? Like course completion, is that up to like the faculty member to decide? Oh, I see, I see. Okay. Um. So um the, the withdrawal doesn't um necessarily have anything to do with how much a student has completed in the course that um percentage is the percentage of the semester so sorry that was unclear um it's not like the incomplete where uh, a faculty member has to use their discretion with the student hopefully and say you know you need to be done with a um, portion of this course in order to qualify for the incomplete um with the withdrawal and a withdrawal can be taken if a student has not done any assignments in the class. And in fact, that's usually, I think, why students will use it or one of the reasons. Um, so that percentage, the 67 percent, um, just indicates um, the 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 place in the term, 67 percent of the term completed rather than course materials completed. Does that make sense, Denny? Yeah, yeah, no, thank you for that clarification, because I, so I, I sit in the uh, academic faculty, I mean, yeah, the academic faculty committee. Oh, cool. And so, because I think that that might be, a, yeah, like a language issue when it comes, because they're also okay. seeing the incomplete. Okay. Why would That's it, a why great would point. for someone to get an incomplete? 
Yep, uh, I like that. Yeah, yeah, because that is confusing. It's like, whoa, I have to be done with 67% of the course to get a withdrawal. It's like, no, 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 you are, students are entitled to take a withdrawal um, up to the withdrawal deadline. Now, I mean, I'm kind of radical in 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 this space um, relative to other colleagues. I'm like, I say we go all the way to the end. I think people should be able to take a withdrawal the week before finals. Like, why not? I mean, I don't really see what the harm is. There may be unintended consequences there. I'm just not thinking of. But one of the things that we struggle with, and I know this to be true because I taught at Arizona State before I taught here at Arizona State, I was able to issue a um, when it came time to enter final grades, if I could see in the gradebook that a student had um, stopped attending or stopped turning in assignments halfway through the semester, I could issue the equivalent of withdrawal. And so I didn't have to fail that student. Um, and I really liked that because I didn't want to fail a student who didn't actually fail. They just didn't go to the course, you know. And so that's slightly related. And it's definitely something that I bring up in, in a lot of the meetings is I think we should have that conversation about faculty being able to issue a withdrawal instead of an F because the F just is going to hurt students. And I know there's financial aid, you know, um, sticky logistics around that. But anyway, that's that's not totally related to today. So sorry. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for mm -hmm. for that example on Arizona State. Um, I I personally very much for moving it past perhaps even 13 weeks. Okay. Um, I think I think everyone here as like a student leader in campus can attest that like there are points in the semester that things get rough and that like we we need support and, and sometimes like I myself withdrew from two classes a semester. Um yeah, due to like workload and and um I had to be realistic with myself. You know it, but I think I, I think it is a GPA saver. I did it because I am planning to go to grad school and I would like my GPA to allow me to partake in, you know, in the grad school applications. So I think I'm I'm certain that those two W's saved my GPA this semester. Uh, but sometimes, you know, sometimes it takes more time for people to to get to that point. They're like, oh, yeah, like I got a. I got to make the boundary. Yep, totally agree. I mean, I, I maximum flexibility for students is my preference for the reasons you mentioned, Denny. Um, a student may be, uh, well, I know this from my sons, uh, and this is really frustrating. Like my older son, uh, he was in a, a, a class, I won't say the discipline, you know, but he was at a solid A all the way up until like week 15, and then all of a sudden, um, some back assignments were graded. He didn't realize that they hadn't been graded, you know, and, and that's, you know, his fault. He should have been looking more carefully at the grade book. But when those were added, then all of a sudden the grade went down. And um, that's a good example of when it would be nice, like you suggested, Danny, for students who are going to grad school or just want to protect that GPA to make that decision and say, you know what, I'm not going to take a D in this class or a, a C minus or whatever. Um, I'm just going to take that withdrawal and either do it again or or call it good. Yeah, I yeah. Anybody else have any comments on this? On top of that, too, I'm all for waiting till the end kind of thing until there's a way to regulate the grading requirements of of you know, instructors. Then you need to have that flexibility and grace for students to be able to withdraw. I think those two go together. I, Based I like on that. what I'm, you just said, you know, I'm yeah. jotting all this down on my notes and I like that point. <laughs> I'll bring that back to the group like, hey, because we don't have a uniform mandatory grade return policy, mm -hmm. then we have to give grace um, and flexibility, as you say, Re. Absolutely. Absolutely. There are students like Denny who are leaders on campus who have big goals and dreams and she can't be sidelined by, you know, having a couple of classes screw her whole GPA. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> No, I'm I'm stoked to to meet with all of you, um, you know, student leaders. It's it's so important to have leadership and engaged leadership, um, and I just I love this institution. You know, I've I've like I said, I've worked in different capacities here, um, and I think we get the best students, um, you know, around. And uh, um, just really want to compliment all of you for 
making time to serve in these important roles and to serve the university and uh, ultimately the community. Um, so I appreciate you giving me time to bring this to you. Uh, if you can fill out that survey and ask colleagues and friends to do the same, that will give us what we need to, um, you know, bring in front of the the group that will um, ultimately weigh this with with your input, um, student leadership. So I think I have what I need. I've got notes that I'll take back to our working group. Um, do you need anything else for me or any other questions? Yeah, is there a deadline that you need to survey by? Well, I mean, we are approaching the end of the semester, so I hate to throw a survey at people because I know I feel surveyed, over surveyed, um, but this is not a long one. So I would say if we could have it by, um, let me look at the calendar here. Um, we we don't have a hard stop, and that's that's probably a mistake on our part. Um, but I think if we could have it by like Friday the nineteenth of April, that would be great. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Yes, of course. Um, great. Anything else for me? Well, nice to see you all virtually. I hope you have a lovely um, weekend. Enjoy this nice weather. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Of have course. Thanks for having me. Again, thanks. Yeah, Bye -bye. Thank you. Yep. I think we have five minutes until Angelica gets here. So I guess I'll motion for another break of five minutes. I'll second that. Everyone in favor? Aye. Aye. Can we vote? Hold on. One. All right. Two, three, four, five. Oh. Six, okay. Yeah. Okay, we're good. We're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll see you in five minutes, guys.
Hi, Angelica. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're just here in a quick break. We'll be back in a minute. Uh, do you need us to, do you need us to have anything up for you? Anything? Um, I do have a document that I'll be sharing. Um, am I able to share my own screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay, good. okay. Perfect. Yep, I'm set. I'll wait for you all to to come back. Awesome. Perfect. All right. Thank well, you. Yeah, it looks like we are at 1:45. Uh, so. If everybody is here, just give me a thumbs up, please. Hi, Ree. Oh, just, just saying hi. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Yay. Thank you for joining Angelica. Is it, is it uh, Angelica or Angelica? Angelica. Angelica. Or Angie. <laughs> Not a lot of people can say Angelica, so I go by Angie here. Awesome. Perfect. Well, thank you, Angelica, for joining us. I will, the floor is yours. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all taking the time um, to have me here this afternoon. My name's Angelica or Angie, whichever you prefer to use, um, I'm fine with. Um, I am the Manager of Assessment and Evaluation within the Vice President of Student Affairs Office um, here at MSU Denver. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I um, I'm here to talk to you about the proposed president's policy on student survey management. Um, I wanna just give you some context and some background to begin with. This is a policy I have been working on <laughs> for about three years. Um, it originally stemmed from some, some uh, things that were going on in spring of 2021 um, that at the time the director of data and analytics and I um, had become aware of just the, the overwhelming amount of surveys that were being sent out, not only to students, but to faculty and staff at that time. Um, for example, in spring of 2021, if you were enrolled as a student here, you more than likely received um, the Campus Climate Survey, the National Survey for Student Engagement, the COVID-19 Student Impact Survey, the um, there was a couple of others that I know. So I, I want to say there was like five surveys that went out to students that semester. And it just, it was um, not only overwhelming in the amount of surveys, but it was also duplicative of some of the work and the questions that were being asked in those surveys. Um, and oftentimes we may or may not have had knowledge of the timing of when it was going to be happening. So there might've been overlap as well. And so, um, I dug in and started to see like, what are other institutions doing about this? I'm sure there's um, uh, other ways to go about doing this. And there are actually very, like quite a few, several universities across the United States that have survey policy management, uh, survey management policies in place. Um, and so this is actually introduced and worked on and made it to president's cabinet in the summer of 20. What year are we in? <laughs> I think it was uh, June of 23, I want to say, um, but it was not voted on um, and it was sent back to be worked on. Um, the biggest issue, and uh, as we walk through it, you'll see is that um, there was maybe some need to have um, a, a less, um, it, it, more people wanted the ability to survey their students internally at the college level. Um, and so we we did away with some things and and rewrote some other items and actually made it a much more focused policy so that instead of this being something that would affect all faculty, staff, and students, we knew the issue right now was primarily with outreach to students. So this is now a very focused policy on management of surveys that are being sent to students. And so um, I'm going to share my screen here. Here. And I'll also send this as a document so that you have it. Actually, um, I wonder if I have if I can drop it in the chat. Let me see if I can do that. That way you all can also then. Um, okay, it is attached and it looks like it is sending possibly. Okay. So it should be in the chat now and you should have access to it. Um, the process of creating a policy at MSU Denver is a is a rather lengthy and uh, systematic process, and so um, the um, there is a university policy advisory council, and they have a set template for what policies should look like. So, just know that the the 
the how it is structured is a templated structure, but the content will be different from policy to policy. And so um, this is the revised now, as I stated, policy of student survey management. It is a um, team effort coming out of the um, data integrity and governance team. This is a um, committee that is comprised of folks from all across the university that come together to talk about data um, and, and the integrity of our data and how best to use our data and how best to define our data. Um, so a lot of things are, are talked about in this committee um, and we are supporting this student survey management policy out of that group. Um, specifically through the work of Dr. Elizabeth Ribble as the director of um, interim director of data analytics and with the support of our deputy provost, Dr. Marie Mora and myself. Um, and so as you can see, you can read through the background. I've given you a lot of the background um, and the and what it stems from. And really the purpose is right here um, to ensure that surveys of MSU Denver students are conducted in a manner that promotes the university's mission, values, and strategic plan, that it minimizes the redundancy and the frequency of surveys, and that, follow, that it follows standard procedures for survey development. Um, this policy specifically would um, lead to the creation of a student survey review group that would be a subcommittee of the data integrity and governance team. Um, and this subcommittee would be tasked with receiving requests to survey students, um, maintaining a survey calendar and a website of the various surveys that are out there already, as well as a repository of surveys that have already been conducted, right? So oftentimes you'll find that um, somebody wants to conduct a survey. Um, and when we look at the, for, for example, and this may not be true, this is very much an example, perhaps they want to survey our students on mental health and well-being. Um, and they had no idea that Currently, our students are participating in a, a national college health assessment and that a lot of the questions that they want to ask in this new survey are already being asked in this other survey. So we would then provide them a resource um, to look at the repository of what's already been done, what's already been collected, where they can possibly already find the answer to their questions instead of resurveying students. Um, all of this is in hopes to minimize, again, the survey the survey fatigue, improve the integrity of our data, um, reduce the oversampling of you as students to do surveys, um, and then also increase response rates. Because if we can all come together and support each other in um, in the surveys that we do that are that can that the information that we collect will, can be used broadly throughout the university, then that would increase our response rates. That would decrease the amount of surveys that students are having to take. And then again, um, that that information would increase and we'd ha have more, much more valuable data. Um, let's see here. There's a lot of information. Um, you'll see there's, there's comments here. So we've, um, I sent this out and disseminated this about at the end of last semester and started to collect comments again. Um, and so feel free through to read through those comments, but also feel free to make your own comments. Um, on Monday, I will be compiling all the comments that have been received. And then we meet with the digit group again that afternoon. So we will do a final read through of the document again to present to the Policy Advisory Council on Tuesday. Um, that's, that's part of the process again of creating a policy at MSU Denver. It's kind of goes through a different steps. Uh, once it's introduced at the Policy Advisory Council on Tuesday, then it's open for public comment to anyone who maybe isn't in a group like this one and hasn't heard about it, they can go in and make public comments. And then we'll reintroduce this again to President's Cabinet and hopefully get a, a yes vote. And, and hopefully through the support of all these different groups, um, we can find some some common ground to understand the, the need for this policy. So there are some exceptions to it. Um, this policy does not cover uh, surveys and evaluations um, that maybe if you attend an event and they're asking you to complete a survey of whether or not you were satisfied with the event, uh, whether or not you what you learned from the event. Um, it is not covering or does it pertain to course evaluations um, or anything really external if you participate external to the university. Um, and examples of some of those surveys that could be exempt is maybe the department chairs want to survey their um, students in their major about course scheduling. Um, and it, there's going to be some other examples that we'll provide here, but um, we will also be open to questions and clarification as part of that subcommittee work that um, that this 
policy will then end up creating. Um, and then also this policy is not uh, anything that would cover any routine business operations. So if you use a survey to collect um, scholarship applications, if you use surveys for voting um, or anything like that, this is not covered in this policy at all. Um, let me see here. This is what the policy, we want a really good representation of folks from across the university to be part of the survey committee. There is already a pretty uh, like segmented across the university, as I've mentioned, representation on the data integrity and governance team. So that'll be covered on it, but we would like um, to have an additional student representative um, represented on this committee as well as part of the decision makers um, as to as part of that process. Um, I think so uh, the tasks for the review group would be again to review those proposals um, to survey students <clears throat> um, to coordinate administration of if needed the student surveys to to make sure it's somewhat as a like a flight controller to like navigate the different surveys so that there is no overlap or duplication. Um, we want to support units in creating robust surveys and so providing some uh, support for training on um, like our Qualtrics survey that's primarily what we use for surveys and giving some best practices. Um, uh, this would also uh, serve as a group that would approve university surveys going out to students from outside entities. We get a lot of requests actually to survey students from people outside of the university and so we want to ensure that we have knowledge of those and can as needed um, um, either approve or, or or deny those requests. Um, I mentioned we would maintain a survey calendar so that if you if you wanted to know, hey, what's happening in the fall? I wonder what kind of surveys are going to be going out in the fall. There'll already be like a calendar set up, and so we can see the consistency and or um, the, the the topics that will be discussed. Um, and then again, we would uh, conduct various meetings as needed to work through the different survey requests that are coming through. Um, we would also work with the Institutional Review Board. That's our research-based arm that uh, ensures that no harm is being done to human participants. And so if there is a survey or research being done um, on our student population, then we would ensure alignment with the IRB. So that is a lot of information. <laughs> um, and you all um, should have access to this document um, in the chat, but I welcome any questions or even comments or feedback that you all might have currently that I can address for you. And if not, I can um, also come back with a, with a question, with an answer if I don't have that for you right now. I have one. Um, yes. I guess, I don't know, how do I read this? Um, like I see the exemptions of, of what a survey may not be, you know, to, to fall under this category. Uh, but I wonder, because I try to do the, um, the community hours survey and i think i think it was you who i i talked to and we uh the answer was that a, a survey regarding that specific uh event uh, or policy was had already happened um, but the survey that i that i wanted to do was was it, it included i guess different questions um is there any way that like Perhaps we could provide for students like a checklist of like, does your survey contain this? Does your survey contain, you know, just so, so we know to what committee is going and also to make your guys' life easier? Yeah, uh, that's actually um, part of the good practice that I saw at some of the other universities. And so um, what I imagine would end up coming from the website that this group would create would not would not only be like a series of resources, but as part of the um, proposal process to survey students would be somewhat of a forum to say to ask some questions that would somewhat logic you out from whether or not you needed to go to this committee for for your survey, right? So it would ask some questions generally of like, do you do you um, want to survey all students? And if it's yes, then you would continue. Um, what areas would you want to survey students? And then you could kind of um, identify the different things. And so yes, yeah, so it, would, it would be somewhat of a checklist. Um, um, so folks could see like, what is it that I need that that I need to provide on my end if I want to conduct a survey so that this survey committee would have knowledge of and could direct me accordingly. Um, the the policy also doesn't like I um, I don't feel like there's a good way. 
um, to communicate this in the in the policy itself, but I don't want it to be seen as a barrier to surveying students. Um, I'd I'd rather folks see this more as a as a conduit to do it better, um, so that we're again the that overlap or the common questions. And um, I, I apologize if if the survey for the community hour. Um, didn't get conducted. I think part of what I had wanted to communicate in that message was that we did have content. I was not aware that your questions were different and we, we could have continued that conversation. Um, and I think that is something that would end up happening in this committee because it, we'd have a, a lot more people kind of digesting the information and understanding what is needed from the various surveys. Okay. Yeah, no, I thank you. Um, yeah, I guess I guess that would be because I've seen the whole process of when you know, when it's that, a suggestion for a policy comes up, but then maybe it didn't go to the right committee and then it needs to go to a different one and mm. so to you, Pac. Um, yeah, but I that that would be my, my feedback and my suggestion is that there is there is a way to not only like guide the students for but to make everything more mainstream, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. No, I completely agree. Thank you for that suggestion. Thank you. How are you feeling, guys? Do you guys have any questions, any suggestions? Particularly those that are coming back as counselors, this is going, this is very important uh, as we speak of student engagement. So just like make sure that you stay in contact with Angelica, Angelica, perdón, uh, with Angelica and yeah, because this this could be a pretty useful tool for, for TSEC to utilize. Yes, yes, absolutely. And please feel free to, to reach out to me directly if you have any other feedback. And as I mentioned, you can leave comments in this document. Um, I'll compile all the, the, the various comments and try to resolve and or um, um, move them in a direction that makes sense if, if they need clarification. Um, but yeah, I know that's my time and I believe Connie's up. I don't know if she's joined the group yet, um, but I'll, I'll seek my time. And again, please feel free to reach out if you have any additional comments or questions. Thank you so much, Angelica. Yes, of course. And I'll add my email in, in the chat as well. Thank you. Thank you, Angelica. Have a have a good weekend. Thank you. You too. Bye. Okay. Uh, with that, I think our agenda is over. Kenny, can you just pull it out just like make sure I'm not lying? Thank you. Yep. Perfect. OK, any last questions, comments? Any clarification? OK, so we'll, our tasks next week include um, the uh, training curriculum for our upcoming counselors. Uh, please, uh, there, there is a lot of things that we should be advertising next week. So if we can get together at one point and like figure out how we're going to do it in a cohesive way, because we shouldn't only ask, be asking students about voting, although, yeah, that is our most important one. And we have to make sure that we get more than 75 students to vote. Um, I think that whole withdraw uh, deadline is pretty important. So let's let's oh, annual report and updates as well. Um, yes. Um. Okay, I think annual report updates, uh, training correct training curriculum suggestions, um, uh, telling students to vote, and then we have this uh, survey uh, for the the wood route line. Um, yes, yes, yes. And spring fling coming up. OK. Cool. Well, there's a lot to do this week. We are not <laughs> going to be bored. No. Um, actually, the next until the semester end, guys, this is going to be hot and and heavy. So we since given the number of counselors we have, I we're going to need all hands on board with a lot of these things. Yeah, OK. Okay, any questions? Oh, okay, then I'm in a motion. We adjourn the meeting. I second. Sweet. Anybody who, everybody who, say aye, please. 
Aye. 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 Okay, I will send a reminder on Monday. I will go draft that right now. Uh, okay, have a good weekend, guys. Thank you all. Bye. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Bye. Bye.